everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 33. Given parallelogram PQRS, QT is perpendicular to PS. So we have QT. Let's just draw out what's happening here. QT is perpendicular to PS. So whenever we have perpendicular, we know we're going to have right angles, and SU is perpendicular to QR. So we'll do uh, right angles on this side also. Prove that PT is congruent to RU. So this is going to be the big statements, the big proof question for our test. There's always one of these on these tests. We have our statements and our reasonings. So starting off with these questions, you're always going to want to start off with what they gave us. So we know that PQRS, PQR, so this whole thing is a parallelogram. And the reason for that is that it's given. And they also gave us that QT is perpendicular to PS and that SU is perpendicular to QR and the reasoning is also given. So looking at this, we know that it's a parallelogram and they want us to prove PT is congruent to RU. So to do that, there's a couple different ways to do that, but what's sticking out to me is that we can prove these triangles congruent and then prove that PT is congruent to RU. So to prove that they're congruent, we have to think of all those parallelogram properties. So one of the properties is that opposite angles are congruent. So that means angle R is congruent to angle P. So let's write that. And this is based on opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So something else to notice is that since we know that these are perpendicular, we know that these angles are going are both right angles and they're going to be congruent to each other as well. So let's write that. We're going to need two statements for that. So we're going to need a statement saying that angle SUR and angle QTP are right angles. So let's write that out. And this is based on perpendicular lines form, forming right angles. And because they form right angles, they're going to be equal to each other. So they're going to be congruent. So we can say angle SUR is congruent to angle QTP because all right angles are congruent. So another property of parallelograms is that opposite sides are congruent. So knowing that, we could say that RS is congruent to QP. And then we can eventually prove this whole thing, these two triangles true by angle, angle, side. We have angle, angle, side. So let's write this out. RS is congruent to side QP. And this is based on opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So that means Triangle QTP is congruent to triangle RUS by angle angle side. So since they're congruent, we know that we can also say what they want us to prove is that PT is congruent to RU. And this is congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCT for short. The hard thing about proofs is that there's different ways to prove things true. So just because you wrote something else doesn't mean you're wrong. So this is how I solve this, but there's other ways to solve this. Here's another method that, um, that, go, that proves that QST is a rectangle using 
parallel opposite sides and opposite right angles are form a rectangle. And then because of that, they use segment subtraction to prove that PT is congruent to RU. So this is another way to go because there's so many different ways to answer these kinds of questions. So don't get too overwhelmed. I always like to look for congruent triangles. That's me because I think that's an easy way to go. On to question 34. A concrete footing is a cylinder that is placed in the ground to support a building structure. The cylinder is four feet tall, 12 inches in diameter. So be careful because notice they're using different units of measurement already. So they're already like trying to trick us. A contractor is installing 10 footings. So, so we're gonna want 10 of these, whatever we're doing. If a bag of concrete mix makes two thirds of a cubic foot of concrete, determine and state the minimum number of, lar of bags of concrete mix needed to make all 10 footings. So notice here, we're, we're going to have to use this number, mix makes a bag of cubic foot. So that means we're, we're gonna wanna convert everything to feet. So 12 inches, we can really say that this entire diameter is one foot. So we're just gonna be working with feet because we later work with feet as well. So it's just the easier way to go. So now, what are we doing in this question? We wanna find the volume of the cylinder and then there's gonna be 10 of them and multiply it by 10 and then figure out how much mix we're gonna need. So first, let's start off by finding the volume of the cylinder. Volume of the cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. So here we have pi and then r is really like 0.5, right? Because it's like 0.5, half a foot. So we have 0.5 squared times the height, which is four. So we can just plug this into our calculator. So this is really just gonna be equal to pi. So this is the volume of one cylinder. Remember we need 10, right? So we're gonna multiply this times 10. And when we do that, we're just really moving the decimal place over. So we get 31.4159265456. So this is the volume that we need, the amount of concrete we need for 10, for 10 footings. That's not what they're asking though, right? What they're asking is if a bag of concrete mix makes two thirds of a cubic foot, how many bags are we gonna need for all 10 footings? So if this is the volume for all 10 footings, what we're gonna have to do is take our volume and then divide by the amount in each bag. So there's two thirds in each bag. So we're just gonna take this number and divide by two thirds, and then we'll get 47.123. So when it says that state the minimum number of bags, we need to know how many bags we need. So we're, we're not just like rounding down or rounding up. We have to think like 47 bags wouldn't be enough, right? Because we would need a little bit more than 47 bags. So what we're gonna do is, is go up one because we'll need 48 bags. So we need 48 bags of concrete. And that's our answer. On to our last question, question 35. The coordinates of the vertices triangle ABC are A minus two, four, B negative seven, negative one, and C negative three, negative three. So now we have different parts. So there's part A, prove that triangle ABC is isosceles. So to prove something is isosceles, we just have to prove that a triangle has two equal sides, right? Isosceles triangle has two equal sides. So what we're gonna do is measure at the distance of two of the sides and make sure that they're equal. So to know which sides to measure out, we're just going to draw like a quick sketch. This is how I'm gonna do it anyway. We're gonna go draw a quick sketch of the triangle. So A is negative two, four. negative seven, negative one. And then C is negative three, negative three. So 
So based on our picture, we can see that our vertices is up here at angle A, and that the two sides that are gonna be equal, that we wanna prove are equal, are sides AB and sides AC. So now we're just gonna take the coordinates of each, so we want side AB first. So we have, so I'm just writing the coordinates we're gonna be using. And B, negative seven, negative one. And the distance formula looks something like this. So for the first time, let's just plug these in. So we have one side, A, B, equal to radical 50. So now let's try the other side, side AC, and we should get the same thing. Notice we get radical 50 here also. So we know that this side is also equal to radical 50. So we know that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. So let's move on to part two of this question, part B. State the coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of triangle ABC after its translation, five units to the right and five units down. So we're gonna be doing a transformation here. But, um, but we just have to write the coordinates, so we don't even have to draw anything, which is nice. So let's write out the original coordinates that they gave us up top. And now we'll be creating new coordinates for A prime, B prime, C prime. And this is based on a translation. So a translation is a transformation where we move the shape around the coordinate plane. So we're not making anything bigger or smaller, we're not rotating or reflecting. We're just gonna be moving, um, in this case, the translation five units to the right. So we're gonna be adding five units to the X coordinate and then five units down. So that's subtracting five units from the Y coordinate. So when we do that, we're just adding five to each X value and subtracting five from each Y value. So when we look at the first coordinate, A, we're gonna take negative two and add five, which will give us three. And then for the Y coordinate, we're gonna be taking four and subtracting five, which will give us negative one. And we're just gonna do the same thing for each coordinate, adding five to the X value and subtracting five from the Y value. And when we do that, we get, we get these answers here, which are our answers. That's a nice, pretty nice, easy one as long as you remember what translations are. I have a playlist on all the different transformations if you wanna check that out, and it goes over translations as well. So this one is tricky, and I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of this question, but, but it's actually not hard, but it is tricky. So prove that quadrilateral A, A prime, C prime, C is a rhombus. So first, let's, let's gather all our coordinates. So we have this quadrilateral A, so this is based on the coordinates we've been working with. So, so actually I'm gonna, let's rip off our previous page so we can see our coordinates. Nice and easy. So we have quadrilateral A, A prime, C prime, C. So A, we know, was given to us is negative two comma four. A prime we found down here is three negative one. What else? C prime, we need C prime. C prime is two, negative eight. And then we have C, which is negative three, negative three. So our quadrilateral is gonna be made up of these coordinates here. So let's just graph them out on the coordinate plane they gave us. So first A, we have negative two, four. And then we have A prime which is three, negative one. We have C prime, which is two, negative eight. 
And then our last coordinate is C negative three, negative three. So negative three and then negative three. And now this is gonna be our quadrilateral we're gonna be working with. This is, and we're gonna to need to prove that this is a rhombus. So let's connect all our dots. So how do you prove something is a rhombus? Um, you're just gonna to need to prove that all the sides are congruent. So if you look back, we already did the work for some of this, right? And this first section here, we know that um, side AC is gonna be equal to radical 50, right? We also know that side A prime C prime after the translation is gonna also be radical 50. So that's just based on distances preserved after its translation. So knowing that we have, we need to prove that all sides are congruent. We already have two of the sides with the, where the distance is equal to radical 50. So now we're just gonna need to prove the remaining two sides are equal to radical 50. So our two remaining sides, we have A, A prime. So let's do the same thing we did for that first question where you just write out the coordinates and do the distance formula to show that it's radical 50. So we have A, A prime. We have our coordinates right here. And then we're just gonna do the distance formula like we did before. So we did see that A prime also gives us radical 50 for the distance. So our last side we just need to find is C, C prime. We have our coordinates right here. C is negative three, negative three. And then C prime is two, comma negative eight. And just doing that same distance formula. So now we have everything we need. We see that it also equals radical 50. So we can fill that in over here. C, C prime is equal to radical 50. And we know all the sides are equal. And just to make like one last statement, proving this is a rhombus, let's just write out a little sentence. Since all four sides are congruent, a, A prime C prime C is a rhombus. And that's our answer. So I hope you found these helpful and I hope you do well on your test. Good luck and happy calculating. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.